Hello everybody. Um, today I want to talk to you about uh, the 10 things that I am looking forward to in the next decade. Now the first thing is already on the screen. Um, I won't mince words about it. Uh, it's the IMSR. Um, it's going to be um, I, I think it's going to be a revolutionary concept. It's not necessarily the IMSR um, or the, you know, Thorcon or, you know, whoever is building a um, molten salt reactor. But it's the, it's the molten salt reactor that can be deployed first. And that is super simple. Um basically what you're building is a graphite block inside a can with a couple of heat exchangers in it and a couple of pumps and that's it so it's super 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 simple and uh, I, I think the molten salt reactor in general is going to um, revolutionize the nuclear field in the end and uh, I'm really 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 excited about molten salt reactors and terrestrial energy is one of my you know the people who one of the companies that supports me so full disclosure on that i mean you can see it at the end of any of all my videos they're my uh, top patreon uh supporter um i i i think they are they, they're on the right track and they will show the world that we can do nuclear dirt dirt cheap um you know next next thing on my list is the fact that we now see uh and, and this happens uh to be um uh, related to the imsr again but the fact that um uh, different countries are going to work together more uh, having you know cooperation between uh, the nuclear regulatory commission and the canadian uh, nuclear association or i don't know if it even exists um, the canadian nuclear safety commission um, you know um, why reinvent the wheel all the time why not work together more um I think this is this is one of the best news items I've seen all year so far. So uh, yeah, international cooperation between uh, agencies that want to push the nuclear needle forward. Uh, that's going to be my second thing that I am going to look forward to in twenty in the twenty twenties. The third thing is the uh, the Oklo micro reactor. Uh, I just envision. A factory somewhere pooping out one of one or two of these each day uh, the same way we would produce solar panels or windmills um, yeah one and a half megawatt fission batteries uh, the, the I mean if you look at the materials footprints of these things it's laughable it's absolutely laughable where you need you know hundreds of tons of materials to build a one and a half megawatt uh, windmill, this thing is probably going to weigh as much as a semi truck. You know, it's not going to be that that heavy. Uh, the building around it, it's not going to be humongous. It's, I, I, look at it; it looks like a beach tent. <laughs> so yeah, Oklo. I'm uh, I'm excited about Oklo. Uh, then there is the news that the Canadian, that three Canadian provinces are going to cooperate on SMRs. Now I don't know what kind of an SMR that they are going to build or develop. Uh, I'm unsure. I saw something about it, but uh, yeah, this is interesting. Again, cooperation in the uh, in the uh, government sphere. Uh, you know, in governance, uh, making sure that uh, all citizens have reliable electricity. Uh, they are talking also about uh, off-grid and on-grid situations. So that's really cool. 
Uh, the fifth thing that I want, that I am looking forward to, and some people might disagree with me, but um, I'm still a fan of boiling water reactors and pressurized water reactors. Uh, GE Hitachi had their um, ESWR, so it was the economic, the economically simplified boiling water reactor, but never got built. I uh, believe they have one license to build one in North Anna, if I'm not mistaken. In any case, what, what the boiling water reactor 10300 is, is a, 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 a shrunken ESWR. It's tiny. It's really tiny. So I believe that the, the whole building is 15 meters tall. And, you know, if you if you lay it on its side, it's perhaps 100 meters or, I don't know, 150 meters long. So it's tiny. And, uh, again, why am I excited about this? Um, if we manage to get a lot of orders in the book for something like this, that means that we get the off-the-shelf quality that you come to expect when you start producing more and more and more components more and more and more units which means that you can speed up production uh, you can speed up the deployment rate and at some point uh, the cost will come down and you have a product that's just you know everybody is going to want one at some point so i think this is going to be a really cool reactor the BWRX300, they call it the X300. So then the sixth one to look out for is Thorcon. Thorcon is working with Indonesia at this moment. They have a memorandum of understanding. They, I believe they, the Indonesian government is, is doing all the studies they need to do in order to be uh, become capable of building these things. And basically what they are are ships. They're ships with nuclear reactors on board. And, uh, and, and the beauty of, of this is there's precedent already. I mean, the, the Russians, they have nuclear reactors on ships. Uh, the U.S. Navy has hundreds, uh, experience with hundreds of reactors on ships. So this is not a, a novel concept. The only novelty about it is that it's a molten salt reactor. But you can you can basically design any you know barge or ship with a nuclear reactor on it. So, but it's still I I think it's really cool and Thorcon is moving ahead, uh, pretty good and uh, I'm rooting for them. I hope that they get their ship, you know their their Thorcon ship built. Uh, within the next decade and that's what I'm really looking forward to then we get good news from France so uh, the French go the French government has asked Ele Electricité de France EDF uh, to prepare to build six EPR reactors in 15 years and uh, they are going to need it because at some point they're going to you know say goodbye to some of the reactors that they own today and um, it's quite simple. They need more capacity. Uh, France is now trying to move away from nuclear. At least there's people trying to get that done. Uh, they're putting more money into renewables. And that's because some people simply believe that nuclear emits lots and lots of uh, carbon emissions. But I think that's just a PR problem, to be honest. Uh, that's just an educational problem. Uh, it can be fixed, but it's going to cost a lot of money. It's going to cost, you know, money to build these things, but it's also going to cost money to re-educate the populace to understand that nuclear power does not emit carbon emissions while it's operating. Sure, there are carbon emissions during the construction, but the IPCC and all the other um, credible energy, uh, energy analysts out there say, no, nuclear 
emits as little carbon emissions as solar and wind. So by definition, it's low carbon. And it gets even lower, lower carbon when you start synthesizing fuels and, you know, manage to uh, decarbonize all the extraction that is required for the materials and for the uranium. But as long as that isn't, you know, hasn't happened, this is low carbon. It's not zero carbon. It's very, very low carbon. Uh, then the thing to look forward to is, uh, I believe that, Rolls-Royce uh, and the UK government is planning to build one of their first uh, SMRs at Hunterton, Hunter, Hunterston, I'm sorry, Hunterston. Uh, I don't know if they really qualify as SMRs because I believe that they are 440 megawatts. So it's quite big. But in case you, you didn't know, so Rolls-Royce is known for the Rolls-Royce Phantom, right? Uh, a, a, a very expensive car. Uh, but they also uh, create jet engines. So you have the Rolls-Royce Merlin engine, I believe. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, an airplane engine. But they also build nuclear reactors for submarines. And they build they they build components for nuclear reactors like uh, heat exchangers, for instance. And they have uh, they have designed uh, a, a small modular reactor that is going to be deployed at the Hunterston site. And the final thing to look forward to, and uh, this brings me to one of my favorite uh, pages on the internet, and that's Pris. The uh, so what you can see here is we have under construction right now 53 reactors in the whole world. Um, as you can see, in uh, you know, a lot of countries China, India, Russia are the most notable. I mean, China has about 10 reactors under construction, India is uh, at seven. Russia is at five, and at this moment, Russia is selling their uh, their VVER re reactors like uh, like uh, uh, we we in the Netherlands we say hot bread, but I don't know <laughs> how to say it in, in English. So yeah, but but it, this is awesome. I mean, we have fifty free reactors under under construction right now, and they will all come in line in the twenty twenties. I must assume. <laughs> Let's hope that nobody is going to make a, a what's bar out of it. Um, you know, taking more than 20 years. But uh, I'm confident that uh, we are now moving away from the era in which there's outliers in reactor construction projects that take longer than 10 years. I believe that all, I, I, I'd say 90%. 95% of these 50 free reactors under construction today will be finished before 2030. And that's what I'm looking out for right now. I, I really hope that all these reactors get, get completed and uh, on time, on budget. And uh, that's my hope for the nuclear industry for the next decade. We start to build productized reactors at, you know build at least four or six or eight of them start building four or six or eight of them not starting with ones and twos no do you know have some orders on the book before you start building make it a product don't redesign after you start building uh low cost loans more experienced builders uh so what we get is nuclear is becoming cheaper again we get positive learning curves uh people start opening up to nuclear more because they see that climate change is becoming a serious problem and that the renew push for renewables isn't enough uh i i predict that germany in this decade is going to re-examine their decision to close down their nuclear reactors. I'm going to Germany tomorrow to protest the closure of the Philipsburg, 
to the Phillipsburg nuclear power plant. So uh, that's my hope for the next decade. Thank you all for watching. Have a nice day and uh, be well. Bye-bye.